Hey everyone, it's Philip and Diana here, creators of the OS First Timer YouTube channel, in which I get Diana to perform a variety of tasks on different operating systems. So far I've tried 12 operating systems made from 1985 to 2012, and in this video I will rate the three best and the three worst. So let's start with the three worst operating systems, or should I say, rotten operating systems. Yes, because these are operating systems I would never install on my computer. In third position for the most rotten operating systems, I've chosen Windows 8. Windows 8 is Microsoft's latest operating system as of 2012. You've tried Windows 1.0, released in 1985, and Windows 3.11, released in 1992, and you still think Microsoft's latest operating system is a worst? Well, when they decide to scrap what was working well and replace the start menu with an unappealing cartoonish grid of different coloured boxes, that just turns me off Microsoft Windows operating systems forever. Seriously, Windows 8 was dreadful. Have a look at these clips and you'll see what I mean. Please note that Windows 8 comes with a quick starting tutorial. Diana did not see this tutorial before testing Windows 8. So that's the login screen. I don't know why they have to keep changing things all the time. You get used to something and then they change it. Why? Just improve the current thing instead of changing it all the time. But how do we do it? Yeah, that's... Okay, this is the home screen to yep. your computer. Yeah. I don't like the look of it. We'll try and check your emails without using an internet browser. Mail. Probably. And there's your emails. Okay, good. Now get out of it. How do you do that? Um, maybe that goes back. That's replying. That's deleting an email. Don't do that. You just deleted a Windows 8 email. Don't worry. How do you get out of this thing? <laughs> Roll something? No. Oh, this is ridiculous. Control or delete? Well, I don't know how to get out of it. What are you supposed to do? I don't know. I would just control or delete. Don't know. It's, it's just, there's no options. It's lost its options. What do you do? Try and put your cursor to a corner of a screen. There? What do you notice? Oh, it's gone though. What's there? Symbols. I don't know what those symbols are. It looks like hieroglyphics. <laughs> hieroglyphics. <laughs> No, it's completely gone now. What's completely gone? Those hieroglyphics at the side. <laughs> oh, wait a sec, there they are. What, what one are you going to click? Start. That oh, gets you back to finally. that screen. If you were in your emails like this, all you've got to do is press this button on the computer and it goes instantly to that screen. But how would the regular person know how to do that? Because that's how the regular person opens their start menu in any earlier version of Windows. This looks cartoonish. I mean, it, it doesn't even look like an improvement on the last one. It just looks like the first one ever. And that all the others have been an improvement on this. If you wanted to access your normal screen showing the desktop and everything, how would you access that? Is, isn't this the desktop? Or desktop? Yeah. <laughs> File, and I'm going to open a new window. Wait a sec. No, I want to open a file. Just write a text document. Where? Open a new... Well, why does it want me to open a stupid new window? I don't want to open a new window. I'm going to a file to open a document. Open a new document. Why does it want me to open a new window? You liking it or not? Hate it. Well, what next, about next you open start. the start menu? Where is the start menu? Where's the start button? That's Internet Explorer. Congratulations. Well, at least that looks a little bit more familiar. Well, where's the normal Google thing? You know how to access Google, right? Not on this thing. Installing Firefox there. Yeah, you'd go to that. Seriously, you don't know how to actually download a program. But I've already got it on my computer. Why would I want to download it? <laughs> because you install Windows 8 on your computer and you I don't have Firefox. I would never be so stupid as to install Windows 8 on my computer. <laughs> After looking at it now, it's just stupidity. We'll try and get it. Well, Firefox. Try and get, but I don't want to. I want to walk back to my room and have my own computer. <laughs> So what do you rate Windows 8 so far? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? I hate it. It's a step backwards. I like when you, 
you learn how to do something and then you just build on that instead of scrapping it completely and then learning a whole new thing. What's the point of that? That's not an improvement, that's a step backwards. And the, even the home page looks just cartoonish and like it's it's one of the first windows. It's cartoonish, it's childish, it's... I, I, it has no appeal. I'd just give up computers. <laughs> so you would not have this running on your no, computer no matter what? I would what. not have this running on my computer. But does it drive you nuts that if you look at the bottom here there's no start button with the start menu that pops up? Yeah, I don't know. That's stupid. Because that's been replaced start. with this. And also oh, all yeah. your apps, there's Firefox. Yeah. So do you like that or not? No. I hate it. How much money would you pay right now if they said, we're going to install it on your computer. If you don't have it installed, you've got to pay a fine of $100. Would you pay the fine of $100? I'd pay, pay the fine of $100. <laughs> I've had enough of and it. And how much do you think they're saying that it costs to buy Windows 8 now? They that... should pay people for it. So what operating system do you prefer to use? <laughs> Go away. What I'm operating not... system do you prefer the to one use? one I'm used to. Well, what That's is like that? The Windows 7. That'll do. You don't even use Windows 7. What do I use? <laughs> Seriously, you should know what Vista. you Vista. You don't, you hate Vista. Well, what do I use then? The XP. thing before Vista, well, yes, well, XP. that's fine. Just stay with 2001. XP. 2001. doesn't matter. I'm used to it. I know what to do. And that's it. Okay, fine. So Windows 8 wasn't good out of the box. But remember, a third-party program called Start 8 by Stardock can add a Windows 7-like start menu to it. Yes, but the operating system should have a start menu out of the box. I don't want to go online and spend money buying Start 8. The start menu should come with the operating system that I've just paid for, or at least be a free option. Okay, we all now know you hate Windows 8, but amazingly there are two operating systems which you hate it even more. How could you get worse than Windows 8? Two words, Microsoft Bob. But that was Microsoft's previous revolutionary idea back in 1995 to make computers ultra simple to use. In fact, you raved about how much you liked it before you even logged in. The more you use it, the worse it gets because the novelty wears off very quickly. Watch this clip and you'll see what I mean. Okay, you tried out a little while ago. Windows 3.1. People found it a little bit difficult to use. Some people just couldn't use it. So Microsoft came out with an idea. What if we make using a computer something everyone can do? What if using a computer is as simple as just using items in your home? Why didn't they have that in mind when they created Windows 8? You'll find out why they didn't have that in mind when we try out Microsoft Bob, released in 1995, to help those who couldn't quite use the computer so well. There we go. This is the login screen. Go. That looks pretty cute. I like it already. And this dog is your little guide dog. He tells you how to do everything. Well, you know, some people would have guessed that without you even saying so. Yep. Just from the little conversation mm. thing at the top. Okay, so what do you do? To how log do you on? sign in? Well, seeing this door thing, maybe you knock on it. Who's there? Oh yeah, here I am. I select my name. Okay. Oh, that's really cute. I like it. Now it has gone a into your house. Effects. This is your computer desktop. What time is it? Um. Oh, it says, "Oops, you need to click on a button first. Just click thanks. To start a program, just click on it. Clicking. Okay, I've clicked on it. The time it's displaying there is the right time. Oh, it is, is it? But it doesn't quite have all the numbers, does it? No. Oh, change clock. I want to change the look. This one. Oh, okay. It looks like it's almost 5 to 10. One, one. This is like nothing I've ever seen. This is great. You, you like it? I do. It's so good. Now, I'm just going to so squeeze this and put the clock up on the desk here. Yeah. So it looks a bit better. Write and save a text document. Writing, I'd assume I'd go to a book. This is just a decoration oh. that doesn't start any programs. Maybe I write with that. Bob Household Manager. No. What's this one? Bob Letter Writer. Yeah, okay, well that sounds right. Because I want to use that. Ah, oh, here we are. I'm assuming I 
Or what does it say? Oops, Welcome to Letter Reader. Help you with all aspects of letter writing. Great. Check your spelling. Right. Just uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Let's start. Let's what would start. you like to do? Create a new letter or open and delete an existing letter? Well, I keep wanting to go over <laughs> there and start it, but it so it's a bit annoying because it keeps on telling you well, to do things, isn't it? I still don't do. I. That's okay because it's it's guiding you. It's, it's helpful. It, instead of you trying to work, it's asking out. what would you like to do. Rough a new name. Letter. Oh no, I'd like to keep it private. Oh, what kind of letter? That'll do. Letter to a friend. I don't want to look at it anymore. Here we are. What oh. style? Classic festive? <laughs> Is this getting a bit annoying to you when it keeps on asking you things? I keep wanting to go to the letter, but it keeps asking me more things. I look classic. That'll do. What What kind of book would do. you like? Now, what kind of picture would you like on it? Oh, that'll do. Now, which address should I put on the letter? You don't have any addresses in your address book. Well, let me put one in. Continue. You'll finish using the letter right now. Didn't even Click know okay I to get started. <laughs> Start typing there. Thank goodness. So that was a bit annoying, was it? Oh my gosh, and it's even doing running writing. The and letter. it's got the stuff at the bottom there. So how are you going to save that? If I click on him, maybe I can ask him. Oh, he's just rolling over. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Other options. Let's save this letter. Here we are. Other options. How would you like to save it? Save it normally or save it abnormally? <laughs> it doesn't say save it abnormally. Save it normally. Woof! Save your letters. Save it normally. Okay. Is this getting a bit difficult? I keep selecting save it normally, but I don't actually understand what's going on. But okay, save with a new title. Woof. Okay. A new name. Letter two. Okay. <laughs> Do you give a half meter sheet? I just save it on a floppy disk. That'll but we don't have a floppy disk. Oh, well, why does it have that option? The disk isn't ready. <laughs> I told you I haven't formatted okay, the floppy disk. Cancel. Quit this program. How do you get out of this program? Exit. Sure you want to exit? Yes, I do want to exit. See if you can open that same file you just opened. So here's the letter thing. Oh, letter two. Here we there are. There it is. Yep, this oh, is the letter. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay, good. You can get out of that now. Good. What is 48 times 32? That looks like a calculator. It looks like a calculator, does it? No, maybe that's a calculator. Educational Insights Interactive. Oh dear, no. <coughs> Financial Guide. Yeah. Um, oh, come on. Where would the calculator be? Well, it's a house. This is as easy as using your house. Household manager. Wait a sec. Um, cleaning, home maintenance, pet scrapbook, locations, moving. Well, it's not in here. Okay, give up. Where's the calculator? I'll give you a hint. Do houses usually have more than one room? Oh, you're kidding. You can go to different rooms. Go to another room. What room would you like to go to? Maybe it's in the study. Okay, in contemporary study. Maybe the calculator would be in the kids' room. Because I do, because kids would use it. I'll try that one. Okay. Oh well, there's a letter writer, financial guide. Oh, look at that. They had email back. Yeah, then. 1995. They had email, of course. Okay. Let me tell you something. Yep. It doesn't have a calculator. Oh. Well, what kind of a task did you give me if it doesn't even have a calculator? But no, 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 no. But you can still use the calculator. How? Okay, with these room things, let's say your contemporary study, can you customise the way your computer looks? Decorate it any way you want, okay. Other options? I want to add something. What should you add to your home? A new room, a door, a Program. Doesn't have Doesn't have a calculator. Find where calculator is stored, so it would be in Windows. Calc.exe. Calc. Yeah, that's a calculator. Yeah. Little box, you can turn it Start program, there it is up there. Oh, there we go. We can make it look however we want it to. We could make it a gravestone if we wanted. And then you can always launch a calculator like that. Just turn off your computer. If there's a light switch, or maybe if I press that, everything will go dark and then it's off. Exit. Yes, sign out. Well, there we go. Done. Do you think this product succeeded or failed? 
Oh, I can see, I can see its merits. It does seem very logical mm. and everything, and the house, it's and the cute little dog giving the instructions. Mm. But the dog giving the instructions can get a little bit annoying, especially when you're trying to write a letter and it's just keeping asking you all these other things. Like, would you be using that in an office? And the office manager's with a little dog in his game, ruff, ruff, would you like to write a letter? Actually, it's not professional. It's more novelty-ish for, for kids. I you didn't liked like it at first. I thought, oh wow, how cute and everything. I bet it was a flop. A uh, Windows 8 or this? Oh, then Windows 8 with a huge instruction manual on how to use it. Because this, <laughs> this would get annoying and it is childish. Okay, so I guess it does look like it would become ridiculously annoying after five minutes. No wonder it was a complete flop in 1995. But that makes me wonder, can it really get worse in Microsoft Bob? Certainly, because Microsoft Bob, although annoying, was at least intuitive. Okay, now for the big moment everyone's been waiting for. What is the worst operating system, or should I say most rotten operating system, that should never be installed on any computer? Out of the 12 I have tried so far, I would say hands down the entirely text-based operating system MS-DOS 6.22 from 1994 is officially the worst. Words can't even describe how bad it is. Just watch these clips from my experience with it and you'll see what a nightmare it is. Now tell me what you're thinking. What are your thoughts going through your head? Gosh, this reminds me of back in my school days when you had to program computers. Yeah, this looks really old. Okay. Is this it? This is it. What? This is the operating system? This is the system. operating system. Oh, wow. Okay, well, it's an operating system. Yep. So, How your you... first task, what time is it? I have to tell you from this. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I would type in run so it actually runs a desktop for me. Okay, we'll type in run. It's a bad command or file name. Okay, well, what time is it? What time is it? It's a bad command or file name. Well, this is not user friendly at all. Do you need a little bit of help? I need a lot of help. Well, what about you check out the help guide? Where is the help guide? Help. Congratulations, oh, oh that's God. how you access help. Well, this would have to come with a book of commands. So it you certainly know. does. Oh, he's going to... I have to admit, I prefer an operating system that you don't need a book this thick to use it. Well, can you go back to the main screen? Back to the main screen. Why are you putting your hand on a mouse? There's no mouse. Why isn't there a mouse? This operating system doesn't have a mouse. Oh. It's completely keyboard, completely text-based keyboard. I wouldn't know what to press. Well, arrow keys. Back. There's no back. Find. Well, maybe I want to find the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, I want to find a clock to be able to tell you the time. So find. Okay. Find. Searches for a specific string of text in a file or files. Okay, I want to search for clock. How okay. I... Honestly, I tell you what. You won't be able to type in any commands or do anything from within help. Please exit the help op system. This is a help program. Exit. Control or delete? No, don't do that. that. <laughs> You've upgraded to Windows 7 Professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's not wasn't... I'm emulating this. This is terrible. Yep. Now, what time is it? It's intuitive. You want to know what time, time. it is? Type oh, in. Time. Is that what you think? Time. Oh, okay. It's intuitive. Write, save, and open a text document. Okay, document. Document. Oh, invalid. Enter new time. Yeah, it wants you to enter the time now because it thinks the time is wrong. Oh. It's a great operating system, isn't it? It's terrible. But what's so, the point of that? You ask the computer the time, it gives you the time. Why does it assume that you're going to enter in a new time? That's just silly. One thing I've learnt from this, yeah. never ask at the time. <laughs> just get, look at the watch. <laughs> Stop it. No. It doesn't take threats. <laughs> oh, well. That it could be programmed to take threats, but it wasn't programmed to take threats. Okay. Enter the time. 
See, that wasn't too hard, was it? Now... So, if you want to know the time, yeah. it'll tell you the time. But then to get out of it, you have to retype a different time in. <laughs> well, you can type the same time in. But that's so silly. That's like... <laughs> you're repeating it. How would you view all the files on your computer? Do you have any idea? File? No. Oh, it's a bad comment. To view the files and folders on your computer, you type in the word D-I-R. DIR, which stands for directory. Now, the word... DOS, and see how it says dir? That means yeah. that's a folder. To open a folder, what do you think you'll do? I can't even move the little cursor up there. Uh, maybe I do DOS. No. That's a bad command. Open? Open DOS? No. Dir, DOS. Dir, DOS. Dir, then the, the name yeah. of the folder. Yeah, and that shows you all the files in it. But you may notice that it couldn't show you everything. Dir, forward slash W and that shows you in a line without all the things. So if you actually want to enter a file permanently and always refer to that, you can type in CD DOS and that will keep it in that file. So you don't have to keep on saying what's in the DOS folder. See how it says C DOS? It means yes. you're in the DOS folder and if you ever type in DIR, it'll show you all the files in the DOS folder. And if you type in DIR and then do a W, It'll show all the files like that. I'd assume TXT is a text document. How do you think you would open that document? It's bad. Everything's Where's bad. Where's Deltree? It's a very negative system. And I don't um, like that blue screen. That really yeah. gives me okay. the creeps. What is 48 times 32? Then you can turn the computer off. Well, give me a calculator and I'm happy to <laughs> calculate. I'll do it on a bit of paper. That's no. how I want to do it. I've Really? Okay. No, can you there stop using my Christmas card <laughs> to write things down on? It's not a scrap piece of paper, it's a Christmas card. I have really had enough of this one. No. No, just open it. Type in QBasic. And it'll open it. See how, e see how easy it is. You just type in what you want and boom, it appears. If you say print 4 times 5, it'll do 4 times okay, 5. Okay, because print is a command word. Yes. So print makes it do something. Amazing. There's actually a command that it's not a bad command that it likes. To run it, how do you do that? F5. You run it lots of times. You've actually programmed an infinite loop which is inescapable. Oh, well, what does that mean? Is your computer broken now? Well, let's just say I'm glad it's not running MS-DOS. <laughs> So am I. <laughs> that would be very expensive. So that was MS-DOS. Yeah, I've really had enough now. Off. Turn it off. Off? No, that's the wrong command. Everything's the wrong command with this system. To turn off your computer using MS-DOS, you just make sure you've quit every single application and boom, you turn it off. At the oh, wall. at the wall? Well, at the, it's better to do it at the desktop, <laughs> but you just turn it off. There is no way you shut down the computer. You never can turn a computer off these days at the tower. Did computers break down back then because of this? I absolutely hate this. If, this is just great, isn't it? What? You say you're a Microsoft Windows fan when every single operating system on your worst operating systems list is made by Microsoft. Windows XP was a success and I use it every day and I love it. It's just Microsoft's past and present operating systems which have not been so good. Okay, now that you've chosen the worst three operating systems, let's move on to the best three operating systems. Yeah, and out of this rotten area. Now, what do you consider to be your three favourite operating systems? Well, in third position I have Kubuntu 12.10 released in 2012. It was a very hard decision to make, however, as Mac OS 10.2 Jaguar came out very close. In all fairness to Mac, the problem is that Jaguar was released back in 2002 and I was comparing it to Ubuntu released 10 years later. Maybe had I tried a later version of Mac such as Mac OS 10.8 Mountain Lion released in 2012, I just may have favoured it over Ubuntu. One positive thing I do want to add in relation to Mac is that when they release an operating system, it is similar to the previous with the changes just being improvements. However, Microsoft, on the other hand, will completely scrap a perfectly working interface and totally change it altogether. 
So what did you like about Kubuntu? Remembering that this was the operating system with an option to add googly eyes and a bouncing red ball to its desktop. Unlike Windows 8, it actually had a start menu. Windows 8 had ugly full screen metro applications with a hidden close button. In Kubuntu, closing applications was extremely simple and they weren't forced to run on full screen. Ubuntu also had some interesting desktop gadgets with, which could possibly be useful. Of course, some just fun novelty ones. Okay, let's play the clip. Okay, so this is the official desktop. Sounds like a movie's up. about to start. And it even says desktop at the top. It's even labelled. What time is it? It's 10.01am. Write, save and open a text document. Oh, I would automatically go there because that's where I go on X. Oh, okay. So that's the menu there. So it's similar to, yeah, the start menu on XP. It is. That's good. And web browser. Look at that. That's much better than the other one you got yeah. me to try yesterday, Midori or whatever it was. I mean, if it's a web browser, call it a web browser, then I know it's a Firefox thing. Applications, maybe it's in there. Office, I would assume that's probably similar to Microsoft Office. That's Okay, I want to do a text document. I am creating a text file. Save. Oh, I like this. This is very familiar. Save. I'll get out of it. What do you think about the close button there? I like it. I mean, it's a round circle with an X and it's got a shade of red through it, so you know exactly what it is. This is very familiar, actually. I yeah. really like it. A document viewer, maybe. Okay, well, you I can do it. it like that way. Okay. Calculate 48 times 32. I'm going to search for it. Calc. Go ahead. What would you like me to calculate? Of course. There we go. Great. Okay, the next task is to customise the way your computer looks. Application settings. Maybe it's settings. System settings. It's work. Oh, window decorations. Oh, oh, it keeps going away. Oops, I can't get it. Window decorations. Okay, desktop theme. It's nothing to do with the desktop background. It is just the actual bar at the bottom and the start menu. Default desktop settings. Stripes. Oh, okay. This doesn't have many varieties to choose from, does it? Okay. There we go. You've put lots of gadgets on your desktop. They're actually called widgets. So what widgets would you like to add to your desktop? What would be something useful to have on your desktop? Well, it's already got those those things there, so I don't need that. I don't want to, don't need a clock. Do you believe that's all the applications available? No, because there's a line here show. Oh wow, there's lots of them. Okay, you just keep looking. Bouncy ball. What's the point of a bouncy ball? Well, you can look at it and see what it does. Okay, well now I'll click. Get a ball. Click on it. On the ball. Yep. <laughs> What's the point of that? It's, it's a widget. Some people want it. So they can just throw it around their desktop when they feel a little bit bored. Oh, calculator. That would be a useful thing to have. So that's just on your desktop whenever you want and you can drag it around. And... Yep. So what do you think about the usefulness of these little desktop things that are always available on your desktop? As in you don't have to open them. When you look at your desktop background, it's pretty much there all the time. Oh, look at that dictionary. That's a good one. Let's have a dictionary on the desktop. How would you move them around? Oh, there we go. I, I understand how you move it around. What's the point of putting eyes on your desktop? We'll have a look. Oh, come on. That's a bit silly. What do the eyes do? Move your mouse around. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> People with a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> how do you get rid of... Th oh, my gosh. Well, how do you remove get rid of one? Eyes. <laughs> remove these eyes. Remove these eyes. I, I want to be notified of me. Is that notification yeah, email? You I'm assuming it would be. What else would it be? Notification that you've got a mail in your no <laughs> post box? No messages. Apps <laughs> your mail. real mailbox? Oh no, it says you've got to obviously have an app. K-mail. Yeah. K-mail, yeah. K-O-P-T. Pig-ding. <laughs> pig Quattle. It's actually ping. Oh, okay. pig-ding, yeah. What okay. language is that in? P 
Kidding and Quattle. Got a virtual on screen keyboard, don't need that because I've got one there at my hands. Log out. Oh, I guess that would be handy to have on the screen. Display Lunar displays moon phases for your location. Do you think a sticky note on your desktop is useful? No. What What's wrong with a sticky note on your desktop? I'll just use a real one. Oh, spell check. That would be handy to have on there. So whenever you want to check your spelling, you just yeah. type it in there? Web browser. I'd want that one. Oh, look. When you go to it, it... Oh, look at that! Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of this bouncy ball. Well, though. make it bounce first. Just give no, it a bounce. Chuck it. I don't want to. You chuck it. There we go. <laughs> Honestly. Who's going to put something like that on their screen? Someone is really? it's a bit bored and needs to liven up their desktop experience. Remove this bouncy ball. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, you want to turn your computer off now? Yes, and I have my pre-installed little off button there. This one. Now it's doing it. Turn off computer. What are you thinking to compare to other operating systems? Is this a good one or...? This one is a good one. It feels very familiar. I think I like the start menu better because I'm just more familiar, familiar. with the start okay. menu. So I, I like this one, yep. but the... What was it, the peppermint one? I think it's the best. Linux Mint. Yeah. Uh, Learn what new. about we talk about a feature of this, the desktop gadgets. You can't do that on XP unless, of course, you download a special program that would allow you to do that unofficially, but this officially has desktop gadgets. Do you see yourself ever using those? Well, look at it this way. I've been using XP for all these years. I haven't needed des desktop gadgets. I've just simply had icons of things that I wanted. Well, look at it this way. These gadgets on the desktop make the desktop a little bit messy. I prefer okay. icons on a desktop. Um, but look, as far as operating systems go, I like this one. This one is good because it feels familiar, it's logical, they don't give strange names for things like Midori for web browser. Well it's great to see a Linux based operating system up on the list of best operating systems. So Kubuntu 12.10 is in third place. What would you rank as the second place? Well, second and first place were almost a tie. But in second place, I have chosen Soren 6.1, released in 2012. It has Wine pre-installed, allowing you to run many Microsoft Windows programs on it, out of the box. It also looked quite similar to Windows, although more toward Vista than XP. Oh, and I thought the funny wobbly windows effect was a great novelty. Great. Let's see some clips of your experience with Thoron 6.1. So Zoran 6.1, or just Zoran in general, is basically for people who are transitioning from Windows, Microsoft Windows, and they want to access Linux. So it's, at its core, it's got this kind of compatibility of Ubuntu and it can access the Linux applications. However, it looks very similar to Windows. Go. So therefore, people that are coming from Windows to Linux, it would probably make the transition a lot more easier. Okay. So this is what it looks like, just basic. With unmodified, I haven't touched this. This is what it looks like from scratch. Your first task is, and I know it's not the real time, what is the time? Okay, well it says 4.01am and I'd be mad if I'm doing this at 4.01. <laughs> right, save and open a text document. GNO menu, Thinking left click. Here we are, the main menu, internet office. I'm assuming it's that one. Text document, okay, want to make a text document? Oh. Okay, so this was very easy to do. Now save yep. it. I go to File, Save. Okay, now okay. access it from your files. Documents. There we go. Simple? Simple, very simple. So you like this? Is it, well, how are you feeling about it versus Linux Mint so far? Linux Mint Cinnamon to be exact. This is actually, even though I really like the Linux Mint one, this one for me is much easier to use. Open 
an internet browser and then make it full screen? I think that's an internet browser because I recognise the symbol as Chrome. Maximise it, you didn't actually maximise What do you think about these buttons at the top? Maximise, yeah, I'm all. I'm used to all this. This is... Those look new. like Windows buttons basically, don't they? <laughs> they do. What is 48 times 32? Okay, well... Do you like how it's um, doing fades and stuff? Like, look, open the start menu and watch how it opens. Notice how it kind of came in? Yeah. Do you like... but oh. do you... do you think it adds to the experience, it does nothing, or... The normal start menu would just appear, it doesn't have a fade okay. effect. What do you think? I think it gives the impression that it's fast. You went into the internet category, how do you go back to the back. main? Back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's logical, back. Yeah. yeah. Let's find the calculator. So I think it would be in accessories. Calculator. I've just got one thing to say about what? it. I've noticed that when I went into accessories, yep. I had to click on it for the next menu to come up. What I actually like is if I mm. went into accessories, then at the side it gave it, gives a drop down menu. I think I prefer that oh, okay. rather than having to click on, click on it. But still, yeah. it reacts instantly. Okay, 48 times 32. Easy. Done. I've got something to show you. Yes. What happens when you normally drag a window around the screen in Windows XP? When you normally drag yeah, it? Yeah, what happens? It just moves around the screen just, when you drag it. Yep, yeah, and nothing special happens? No. Try and drag this around the screen. Okay. Oh, oh wow! Shake it around. <laughs> it's like you're shaking out doing washing. <laughs> Like you what? Doing know. washing? No, shaking out some washing. <laughs> Is that the first thing that shows that you're a real mum? Doing washing. It's on your mind. Okay. You're using the computer and you're thinking about the washing. So if you shake it rapidly, yeah. even up and down, <laughs> up and down too. Oh my god. So and if you do it in a big circle. I mean. In a circle. Do a circle. Okay. Oh, wait a sec. Really fast. Whoa. See? Okay. What flapping do you think about, about that? <laughs> oh, what do you think about. about flapping them about? That's really cute. <laughs> so you, so like, do you think that adds to the experience? You would want that, or do you think it's just a novelty that oh. would get annoying? It wouldn't get annoying. It's fine, mm. but it's not like I'm gonna change operating systems just For to that. have the little shaky flapping about. It's it's just a novelty. It's customise the way your computer looks, and typically you'll do this by changing your desktop background. Change desktop background. I mean, in Windows XP it says properties, then you've got to go to change desktop background. Oh, that's all right. Oh wow, these are some good ones, aren't they? How about you look at a few instead of just one? Oh wow, and you've got to scroll down menu. Look how many there are. Oh, I like that. Um, I'll have that. And see, it changes instantly. You don't have to click apply or anything. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I like what? that. I really like that a lot because that's even better than my XP. It makes things faster. Yeah. And it just, it's to the point. I like yeah. it. Yeah. This is okay. good. I love it. You, so, better than the next mint? Well, actually, yeah. So this is officially your favourite operating system. Zorin 6.1 is your favourite. It is officially my favourite. I do like this one. But apart from XP? Or do you like it better than XP? I don't know. I actually don't mind this. <laughs> Even okay. though I, I like what I'm used to. This is quite easy to, okay. to use. You can just explore the operating system a bit. Your software centre, what's that one? Oh, okay. So these are all the... Yep, free programs. Free programs. Yep. Okay, well I've had enough of that. Now, I know that's the internet thing. What's this one? Oh, that's... This is all like your files? Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's my one item. That's that document I created. I like the fact it shows the number of items. So you can unpin them if you don't think you'll ever use them. Or you could pin... How would you add something on there that you use often? For example, you want to use LibreOffice. How would you add that to this so it's always there and you don't have to go all the way to Office to get to it every time? Okay. Well, so there this, it is. How would you add it? Office. I'm assuming maybe right-click it. But how would you actually add it to the bar? Oh, maybe I just move it down here. Oh, it moved back. Wait a sec. I'll try again. Oh, I did. Let's shake the window around just to see it. See? They all do that. <laughs> This is so funny. It's like, a, it really is like a sheet. And I'll show you a way to make it full screen. Yeah. Put it to the top of the screen or, yeah. And that just instantly. Yeah, that, so you grab it and screen. push it up. That's 
Yeah. Windows 7 does that too. Tell you what, anyway. This, this looks like a really well made operating system. I really do like this and I think that this is a 2012, so yeah. this is much more up to date than the mm. current one that I'm using. XP. If I had to move to a more up to date one, this would be the one I would move to. And you'd choose this over Windows 8? Oh gosh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, there's nothing. <laughs> Windows 8 is really, really bad in my opinion. Well, you can turn your computer off now. Okay. So I assume I go there. Yep. And that's probably the shutdown. Yep. Oh, I tell you what, I really. This one's like a winner. This one. this one is the winner. Linux. It's not Windows. It hasn't got compatibility with Windows programs like Microsoft Office unless you use Wine. I saw Wine in there. Yeah, and it's pre-installed. But remember, yeah. Wine isn't perfect. It is a little bit hard to use. Does well, that put you off enough to? use Windows 8 instead? No, 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 nothing could put me off to the extent where I'm actually put off so much that I use Windows 8. Nothing could put me off to that extent, honestly. Although in my videos I did rate Zorin above Mint, and I'll probably cop some criticism from changing my mind, but I am just being honest here, and after seeing so many operating systems, it is so easy to forget what the previous one's features were. I have had another look at the videos and I did comment in Zora that I would have preferred if the content of the categories were displayed to the side as you run your cursor over the menu items. And yet this is exactly what happens in Mint. In Zora you need to click onto it for the list to be displayed. Linux Mint 14 Cinnamon Edition released in 2012 is officially my favourite operating system. I love how you could run your mouse over almost anything on the screen and it instantly tells you what it is. Although mine isn't pre-installed in Mint, I just simply ask my son to install it for me. Okay, here's a clip of Diana with her favourite operating system. Um, just ignore the bug splat. Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. What's okay. that for cook? So first of all, raid of the boot screen, what do you think? It's nice, simple, uncluttered. Does wow. The current interface, the desktop background. That looks really good. I like the 3D effect. And it's so simple and uncluttered. And it looks very professional. What time is it? 12.46. Great. Fantastic. Oh, if there's a day even. You run your cursor. Write, save and open a text document. What's that? That Firefox web browser. Thank you for telling me. Terminal. I like the way it, when you run your uh, mouse over it, it actually mm -hmm. tells you what it is. Files. Okay, well, what's this menu? If I press the menu. Oh, okay, that's very logical. Office. Um, office Writer, Document, let's have a look, ah, so, oh, let's see if it does the spell thing, ah, it does, perfect, and file, save, oh, and you can name it there, I guess, save, very logical, um, can you now open that file, so let's open the files, documents, okay, open it, that's later in the video, and don't worry. There the it is. That I just so, do you think it's simple to use yes. so far with this? Very simple, and what I love about it is the fact it's very uncluttered. How would you maximise this? The it's plus and minus here. So, if I. Ah, minimise. Well, that's logical, isn't it? And maximise. Well, look at this. But I wonder what that does. Oh, that search documents. Oh, I love the way when you run your mouse over it, it actually tells you exactly yeah. what it does. Okay, so maximise, logical, yep. So customise the way your computer looks in any way. Let's look at the menu. System settings. wonder if it's this... Ah. Oh, how do I get to that? Maybe you do have to do it really fast. I did it! I did it! I did it! You have to do it really fast. Can I just tell you something? What? It's not about doing it fast. Let me just show you. You 
were putting your cursor to go to it, but on the way there, your cursor was touching oh, that. Oh, okay. You see, so okay, it was okay. flicking into sound so and video. If so I what go you would there need to do? Yes, that way. Yeah, that way. Ah. That's what happened. <laughs> I just thought you had to be fast. So you can put oh, your cursor over that, that, and it tells you what the programs do. It just looks really good, and I like the way when you run your cursor over it, it does actually tell you themes. Or oh, maybe it's that. Change a few, and you'll notice. Look at the bar at the bottom as you switch. See how it's changing? Oh, yep, yeah, the bar's changing at the bottom. And the menu too. There's backgrounds here. Oh, okay. And that would just simply change oh, the background. Oh, that would change the desktop background. Yep. Okay, end of the world, there we are. How appropriate since we're <laughs> coming up to December 21st, 2012. <laughs> Remember you were worried about things not being compatible? So open the PDF file. That's the PDF. It's compatible. Fine. And open a uh, .doc file, which is a Word document, yep. from your own computer. Boom. No conversion needed. It is compatible. Okay. At work, Ron has asked you to download and install onto your computer Google SketchUp, just to do some 3D modelling. Okay, so I've got to go to the internet, find Download it. Google SketchUp. Keep compatibility in mind. Internet. Download the free version. Oh, it gives you an option of Windows XP, Vista 7 and Mac, whereas this isn't either of those. It's not it? either of them. It is not compatible with this operating system. What I've done for you yep. is downloaded a very popular program called Wine. What do you notice about the logo of Wine? It's a Windows symbol. Oh yes, look, it says it's selected the Wine Windows Program Loader, so it's selected that. I didn't even yep. have to. And now it's downloading. So there we go. What have you noticed? Welcome to SketchUp. There it is. And uh, you just go next. Install. Lovely. That one maybe? Anyway, click start using SketchUp because this is just, you don't really need to know how to use this program, don't worry. Okay. And there we go. You are running. I just want to show that it runs. Uh, <laughs> a bug splat. That's not good. It, it means that this program isn't compatible. It tried to be compatible. <laughs> well, trying's not good enough. It really should have worked. SketchUp was unable to in was unable it was to do with the graphics card. Oh. And now it's gone in another. <laughs> Turn off the computer and tell me what you think of it. It. Shut down the computer, yes. So I do this shut down thing, don't I? Yep. So, what did you think? I found it easy to navigate. Yep. Logical, uncluttered, and I liked when I ran the cursor over mm. things, the way it told me what that was for. Definitely my favourite out of all the operating systems, and, and what's more, why would I even need these Windows programs when you've just showed me a whole stack of software that 65,000 programs for, for Linux, yeah, made I mean, for Linux. You could just go through the manual or book or whatever it is that you go through and just work out what each one is, how to use it, and if, if it's just as uncluttered and simple as mm. what I saw, the desk, desktop and all it's going into files and yeah. this and that, I, yeah, I think it, it is. would just be as fantastic to use, yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Your top three favourite operating systems <laughs> were all Linux based. Why does my sister have to do funny things? Okay. And even though we caught four recording these videos, you hadn't even heard the word Linux, they were all filled in your top thing. By the way, what were the other six operating systems you tried that didn't make the best three or worst three list? The other operating systems that I tried were Windows 1.01, .01, Windows 3.11, Mac OS 10.2 Jaguar, Elementary OS Luna Beta 1, Jolly OS 1.2 and Ubuntu 12.10. Okay, that concludes this video, and remember that you can check out the full unedited experiences of each of the 12 operating systems you tried out on our channel, OS First Timer. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified by email when my mum tries a new operating system. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. Bye. Bye.